Last night at 3.35 a.m., a significant digital disruption occurred across several high-security data networks in Beijing and Chengdu. This event marks one of the most sophisticated cyber offensives of the war to date. Ukrainian intelligence units, reportedly in coordination with Western cybersecurity partners, executed a precision cyber strike. The attack crippled multiple data centers linked to China's $3.1 billion military tech support program for Russia. This was not a conventional denial of service attack or a simple data breach. It was a far more precise operation. According to initial reports from European intelligence monitors, the offensive targeted China's AI-assisted logistics infrastructure. This system had been quietly funneling advanced satellite imaging, drone guidance algorithms, and encrypted communication software to Moscow. Within minutes, the digital backbone of that support program collapsed, corrupting gigabytes of classified research and rendering hardware systems inoperable. To understand the event's magnitude requires context on the deep cooperation between China and Russia. Over the past year, Beijing's state-run defense companies, operating under commercial fronts, have been supplying Russia with vital components for its drone and missile programs. These supplies included semiconductor arrays, high-resolution optics, and AI-based target identification modules. Ukrainian intelligence had tracked this flow for months, identifying a shadow network where Chinese firms embedded military-grade software updates into dual-use technologies exported under the guise of civilian research. This network was not just about hardware, but about the digital architecture that made these weapon systems smarter and more autonomous. When the Ukrainian Cyber Defense Command launched its operation, it was not merely disabling computers. It was dismantling an invisible supply line connecting Beijing's technological capabilities with Moscow's battlefield requirements. The immediate impact was swift. Several research divisions under the China Electronics Technology Group Corporation, or CETC, went offline simultaneously. Backup servers failed to initialize, and encrypted databases became unreadable. Employees arriving for work reportedly found blank screens and scrambled files labeled with the Ukrainian Trident emblem, a clear signature of the operation. Western analysts have described it as the most consequential cyber offensive since Stuxnet. Like Stuxnet, this was not random chaos, but surgical sabotage, designed to erode critical systems. Early forensic reviews suggest the malware introduced by Ukraine's team may have exploited zero day vulnerabilities in CETC's internal operating systems, flaws previously unknown. Once inside, the code propagated laterally. Rewriting core firmware in research servers connected to Russia's defense procurement systems. This effectively destroyed years of joint research data, including communications between Chinese defense analysts and Russian drone engineers. The loss of $3.1 billion in military technology represents an entire tier of development that may take years to rebuild. China's digital logistics systems, designed on centralized command structures, meant that neutralizing a core node made redundancy difficult to achieve. In Beijing, the government's initial response was silence. State media avoided coverage for hours before issuing a brief statement, citing a temporary outage due to system maintenance. Within the intelligence community, however, reports indicated internal investigations were launched and multiple cybersecurity divisions were placed on emergency footing. By 8 a.m. the next morning, major defense contractors, including Norinco and Polytechnologies, reported system-wide lockouts. Some terminals allegedly displayed banners in Ukrainian and English stating, support aggression and your systems will turn against you. Inside China's Ministry of State Security, a crisis meeting was called. Leaked internal communications suggested the attack had bypassed conventional firewalls and even China's quantum defense layer, a proprietary encryption barrier. China's National Cyber Emergency Response Center, or CNCERT, was deployed to trace the infiltration vector. Early assessments suggested the malware entered through an AI, assisted logistics platform used jointly by CETC and Russia's Kronstadt Group, a drone manufacturer. The apparent entry point was a firmware synchronization update issued three weeks earlier. The malware had reportedly remained dormant until it received a time-triggered activation signal from an external command source, presumed to be Ukrainian servers masked through multiple relays. 
This activation corrupted internal data nodes and caused a cascading failure across neural network clusters used for analyzing satellite and aerial imagery. For Beijing, the primary concern was not just lost data, but exposure. The attack publicly substantiated what Beijing had long denied, that it was providing advanced technological aid to Russia's war effort. Publicly, the narrative shifted. The People's Daily cited foreign interference in China's digital infrastructure, and Chinese social media platforms began censoring mentions of the outages. The Chinese Foreign Ministry later summoned several European diplomats, accusing their governments of complicity. For Moscow, the disruption was severe. The Kremlin had become reliant on Chinese support for its drone production lines following Western sanctions. Much of that support flowed through joint projects disguised as academic collaborations. Now, those digital bridges were broken. Russian military insiders confirmed that real, time satellite coordination with Chinese intelligence partners was disrupted. Factories in Tatarstan and Bryansk, which assembled hybrid UAVs using Chinese circuitry, were unable to synchronize software updates, halting production at several facilities. The incident created immediate tension between the two allies. Russian intelligence sources revealed that Chinese officials demanded explanations for the vulnerability. Privately, Beijing reportedly blamed Moscow's reckless operational hygiene, claiming Russian engineers failed to follow protocol. Moscow, in turn, accused China of downplaying the compromise. According to diplomatic insiders, a scheduled bilateral defense summit in Harbin was abruptly postponed, a rare public sign of discord. This breakdown in trust had immediate consequences. Russian intelligence officials reportedly began limiting data sharing with China, fearing that Ukrainian malware might still be active in joint systems. Sensitive cooperation programs involving missile telemetry and satellite mapping were quietly suspended. The cyber attack had tangible consequences on the battlefield. Drone operations over the Donbass and southern Ukraine experienced disruptions within 24 hours. Intercepted Russian radio transmissions revealed units complaining of loss of visual sync and failure of remote analytics. Western intelligence observed a sharp decline in the effectiveness of Russian drone strikes, estimated at as much as 40% within a week. Ukrainian front line commanders seized the advantage. In one notable development, a Ukrainian drone squadron carried out successful strikes on Russian ammunition depots near Tokmak just hours after the cyber attack. The reduction in Russian aerial tracking apparently allowed the operation to proceed undetected, a clear demonstration of how the digital offensive directly impacted kinetic warfare. Ukrainian forces also launched coordinated advances in Zaporizhzhia and Luhansk, exploiting gaps in Russian aerial surveillance. Military analysts from the Institute for the Study of War later reported a marked decline in Russian drone coverage, confirming the cyber attack directly degraded Russia's operational awareness. For Ukraine, this operation marked a strategic turning point. While Kyiv has demonstrated innovation in drone warfare and missile interception, this event revealed a new digital front. It also underscored a geopolitical message that China's covert support for Russia was not untouchable. Behind the strike's success lies an evolution of Ukrainian cyber warfare strategy. Since 2022, Kyiv's Defense Intelligence Directorate, GUR, and the State Service for Special Communications, SSSACIP, have collaborated with NATO's Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. These partnerships have helped Ukrainian specialists develop tools capable of targeting both hardware dependencies and data ecosystems. Ecosystems. What analysts found remarkable was the restraint demonstrated. The attack remained confined to specific defense, linked systems, and did not spread to China's broader financial or civilian networks. This suggests an intention not to provoke, but to send a clear message. In other words, analysts framed this not as cyber terrorism, but as cyber deterrence. Western intelligence agencies noted the sophistication of the strike. A source within the UK's GCHQ described it as a blueprint for modern digital warfare, an operation that demonstrates precision, legality, and discipline. In Washington, US cyber officials who had supported Ukraine with threat intelligence reportedly saw the attack as validation of their collaboration, viewing Ukraine as having evolved into a peer in cyber warfare. The reverberations of the 3.35 a.m. cyberstrike rippled across every capital where technology and security intersect. 
In Brussels, officials from NATO's Cyber Defense Center convened an emergency assessment. An internal memo reportedly described the operation as a paradigm-shifting moment in digital deterrence. For China, the implications went far beyond the immediate damage. The attack exposed the fragility of its dual-use technology strategy. Its reputation as a cyber-resilient power was shaken. Domestically, engineers worked around the clock to rebuild destroyed databases, some of which stored real-time battlefield telemetry from Russia. One analyst anonymously admitted the damage was equivalent to wiping out five years of computational progress. Beijing also initiated internal purges within its cybersecurity administration, removing several officials for negligence. For Russia, the long-term consequences were significant. Its reliance on Chinese AI support had become a critical vulnerability. Moscow's engineers reportedly began reverting to manual command protocols, effectively rolling back some defense capabilities. President Zelensky, without naming China or Russia, addressed the nation three days later. His tone was measured. When others use technology to spread destruction, we use it to restore balance. Ukraine fights not only for its land, but for a world where aggression, digital or physical, has consequences. At the United Nations, diplomats discussed the implications. China accused unnamed states of enabling a cyber attack on sovereign infrastructure while Western representatives countered by citing Article 51 of the UN Charter, the right to self-defense. For the first time, cyber warfare entered diplomatic language not as an abstract threat, but as an instrument of state defense. The event demonstrated how a nation under siege could challenge two major powers using innovation and precision. The unofficial codename Operation Silence Dragon began to circulate. Weeks after the incident, a classified NATO briefing reportedly concluded that Ukraine had not only won the battle for its networks, it has redefined the boundaries of warfare. The operation cemented Ukraine's status not only as a battlefield innovator, but as a cyberpower capable of striking the global supply networks that sustain its enemies. 